10 maart 2013. We are backstage with um, Virgil and the Accelerators. The whole band is here and they are uh, ending up a small tour. And the last gig today is in Holland, Arnhem. Luke's are live. <laughs> Guys, um, welcome to our radio show, uh, Blue Smooth Radio. For a small introduction for our listeners, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Virgil McMahon. I play guitar and sing in Virgil and the Accelerators. I'm Gabriel McMahon and I play the drums in Cowbell and Virgin and the Accelerators. I'm Jack Alexander Timmis and I play the five string bass. Five string bass. Guys, it's about an hour you go, no, no, 45 minutes you go on stage. Um, how do you prepare? Next to uh, Wi Fi a lot and <laughs> check your email, but is there any special preparation for a gig like tonight? We just chill out and, you know, we do a little bit of warm-ups and stuff. Just okay. standard things, really, but, you know, we just like to chill out and, you know, just go on stage and do the gig, really. And in a relaxed mood. And yeah, 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 and yeah. We have our little ritual of playing 12 bars of a song in the dressing room and giving each other a cuddle before we go on stage <laughs> yeah. as a last-minute, <laughs> let's-go-to-walk type thing, you know. Is it so that you would like, in every gig you play, would like to conquer the audience, that they leave with a with a sense of, hey, that was a brilliant show I saw, or is it so, man, no, I do my gig, and if I'm playing as well as I can, that's enough for me? No, we always go out there, try and give it 110%, no matter what, you know, and we've, we've done loads of gigs where there's only been a few people, or there's been a lot of people, and we give it the same every night, really. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd definitely say so. Um, every gig's different, you know, um, and uh, we just, you know, try and do the best we can every night. Virgil and the Accelerators is called the band. Who is Virgil? And I know that. <laughs> you introduced yourself, but who is Virgil and where, where is he musically standing at this point of, uh, in time? Well, in the, right here in the present, you know, that's, uh, that's where we are. You know, we all have future common goals and where we want to go and whatnot, but right here we're in the here and the now, I'd say. And, um, you know, we're just uh, trying to keep busy, tr keep going, and, you know, keep climbing that ladder, hopefully. Well, that sounds to me that you're eager to climb the ladder. It's not only uh, into the music. You want to achieve something and get somewhere in the music business. Do you have set a certain amount of time to uh, achieve those goals? I'd, I'd say so. I'd say the time's pretty kind of unlimited in a sense, really. You it's know. quite on our side because we're young guys and you know, we're keeping plugging away. And we, when we're not playing, we're rehearsing every day and for about five hours a day, aren't we? Mm. And uh, just keeping the blood flowing and the music flowing and just keep it all alive, you know? You're all living for the music. Can you live from the music at this point of time? Yeah, we can. You know, it's um, you've got to start somewhere, really, as with, as with any job. So, you know, I mean, you know, thing, things get better as you go on, but you know, you have a good time doing it still, and that's what's really important. <laughs> it for you guys and then maybe uh, alphabetically starting on the right side then. and did it for you to go in the music business who's your big hero who decided for you that I'm gonna play the guitar and drums or bass and, and that would any uh, any mention of yours Virgil well I guess um, it, it started for me when I was uh, a, a young child um, with my dad who played guitar and played in bands and, and whatnot, so he was really my first kind of hero. Is, uh, you know, I saw him and went, I want to do what he's doing, you know. And um, I thank him a lot for that, um, because it's, that's, that's what I want to do with my life, that's what we all want to do, you know. And um, 
he, so I'd say he was my first big hero. But then obviously you've you, you've got your, your kind of usual suspects of, you know. Your, I see one. Yeah, your your, your <laughs> Hendrix and your Stevie Ray and all that sort of thing. But um, you know, any we we like all kinds of different music. You know, all of us have different influences and and uh, different kind of you know people who we you know like to aspire to in a sense. So yeah, it's, it's kind of that's most mostly interesting to know because um, the big mistake most guitars of musicians make is that they're going to copy them instead of developing their own uh, style and, and, and what they want to do. The most important thing is, you know, take from who you really like, take what you can, but the most important thing is find out who you are, you know, and to be yourself, that's, that's the most important thing. But it's natural progression, I suppose, you know, you have to go through these different people and these different styles to find yourself. But it's you hard know. to be original these days, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mm. So, you know, you just got to keep trying and keep going at it. To find an angle that appeals to people. Then. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, my influences um, strain from prog and blues, origin old blues and jazz and that kind of thing. And uh, Virgil's just out and out blues and you know, psychedelia and that kind of thing. So all that different blends and tastes really just mix well together and it forms into something that is kind of original. And uh, I could definitely say that we are, we're out there doing similar to what other people are doing, but we're in our own kind of uh, area, if you will, of okay. where we are. Um, yeah, um, my influence is, well, biggest influence for me in playing the bass you know full time and taking it further in my bedroom was probably Norman Watroy and I've been lucky enough to play we did a tour with Wilco Johnson and, and he's been his long time bass player for many years now so you know I was lucky enough to do two tours with him and get to know him and it was great but other bass players you know John McVie from Fleetwood Mac, Bootsy Collins you know I'm I just like music, really. You know. I heard a few names in, in the answers you were giving. Um, is it possible that you're on stage and you're starting a song and it ends up in a jam? That you look at each other, let's let's go and see what brings us. Or is that just for the rehearsals? I guess you're a band who, who plays like that. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd I'd say so. I mean, we like to have a jam and you know to, to kind of draw the song out, as it were. Um, not with every song, but you know there are certain songs where you go, yeah, let's feel it out, see where it goes. You some know? of them can be longer, some, some sometimes, and sometimes right. they can be shorter. That's, That's right, and it's always really interesting, you know, to have a jam and see what, where the song leads you, and you know, it's uh, that. That's kind of what makes it fun. Most of their songs are coming from a jam. Exactly. That's that's how you you start out getting a song, you'd start jamming with the guys and hey this sounds good, where can we go from here, you know, how does this progress? <laughs> Informed, right? You're uh, a South African. That's right. From, from yeah, and but you're living in England for quite a while. Mm. Immigrated to the UK about 11 years ago. That's right. And uh, we lived in West Wales in a town called Aberaeron for. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a great time, but uh, <laughs> we lived there for a, for about a. Eight nine years, and uh, me and Virgil moved to uh, Birmingham, England, um, about over three and a half four years ago, and uh, that's really living in the place where metal and rock was invented. I mean, you can't wish to live anywhere else, can you? <laughs> and that man's Birmingham born and bred. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, I've not really lived anywhere interesting, you know, outside of 
Birmingham really so but now you're uh, touring and hopefully touring the world and uh, as you leave this gig behind you come back to England and then tour with Uriah Heep with Michael Schenker with Johnny Winter that would be a dream for a lot of bass or a lot of bands to, to open up for those bands is that because you like to do it or is that because uh, your name is spread wider around and in a faster pace than you probably would if you go on your own well, we we you know love those bands anyway and um we you know we go and open a show for anybody you know who will have us and uriah heap that was a great experience for us wilco johnson was another really wonderful experience too um we're looking forward to going on the road with michael Schenker and johnny winter you know and um it's it's a real pleasure and i th you know you kind of hope that while you're out there you know you know your name's kind of spreading out too you know you're trying to sell your product every night as it were it's a business in the end, in the end of the day it's always a business how people like um virgil and the accelerators who's writing the songs is it a all three of us, all three of us? is it a vata band as i see your your website is called that and or is it a hey Virgil's coming up and you're playing along with he is thing is because the name is in front. I mean no, the band is about all three of all us. All three of us. It's, it's, it's not it's not, you know, one solo guy with guns for hire. It's <laughs> it's you know, the band is all three of us, you know, that's and the songs are written by all three of us. All three of us have ideas, all three of us put the ideas down, you know, we bat them back and forth. Um in, until you have a finished product of a song, you know that's 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 how we go about it. There's no I write the songs and you do this. It's you know totally. <laughs> working on new material on the road or is it specially um, being restricted in the rehearsal uh, room? Well on the road it's a little more difficult to you know you have certain ideas that you'll note down and whatnot but um, it's a little more difficult on the road you know to find the time to sit down and you know because you're traveling you're in hotels you're sitting backstage at a gig preparing you know for the for the show and all that sort of silly thing. interview <laughs> but um, oh no we love doing the interviews but it's it's you know when we're at home in a rehearsal studio, then that's when we've all got the thinking caps on, you know. And we're very lucky to live on top of the factory, so. Uh, but sound checks are also a great place to try a, try yeah. out new material when have during sound right, checks and right. that kind of thing. You can get a live feel for how the tune's going to be when you you actually come to playing it and putting it in the set. So we do do them sometimes in sound checks. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we've got. Um, second album you know in the mix was it's it's, it's nearly it's nearly it's getting there there's a lot of uh, a lot of tracks coming out and a lot of new sounds and uh hopefully yeah we can start recording it in september time it's always difficult the second uh, cd they say yeah. the second album is always difficult than the first one is that do you feel that the same way yeah well you've got your your whole life to write your first album and you've got a year to write your second so <laughs> but, you know, you can try. but but this time round, we've, you know, we know each other better now than when we did the first album, and we're just trying to keep it different but maintain the sound of, sound of the band. And you know, it's um, it's it's coming. It's well. It's also you also got to forget that you have a first album and you want to mm. do a second one and start act as though you're starting from the ground up. Just the game. It's a good way to uh, sort NLP, neuro linguistic programming. It's, well, it's my first CD. It's always my first CD. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah.
Are you always, always a guitar? Are you interested in guitars? If you walk in, in, in a music store, you're always looking at the guitar you can't buy. The guitars are my life. That's, that's, that's what I live for. It's like oxygen, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I do like going in guitar stores, but there's only specific guitars that I'll look for. I won't just look for anything. Um, because there's always something I have in mind. I think I'd like to find something like that, or I'd like to find something like this. But, y you know... Gibson or Fender? Both. Love them. Love them. Couldn't, you know, do without either of them. I couldn't say, yeah, just one will do for me, you know. The best of both worlds, I think, is always good to have, you know. And uh, over here we've got a Lakeland. Yeah. And this Five string. Yeah, this is a really great bass. This is Jack's baby. And um, this is a really wonderful instrument, too. Are you... Is it is it also if you're gonna get bigger in in, in name and everything that you can bring a, your own set on 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 the road because you can rent a, a bigger van and put all the stuff in you like and now sometimes you you play small gigs and you can't put it all in where you want. Well, we're we're, we're pretty fortunate in the fact that we own our own van um, and we take our equipment, our amps and our drums and you know that sort of thing in the van and we've got enough for everything that we need and you know depending on the size of the gig if I if the gig's big enough I can use two or three amps okay. but if it's a slightly smaller one I can use one amp it's not a problem okay. you know and that, you know that's that's kind of how we do it I've seen that more more often that people put two three different amps next to each other are you experimenting with also with different types or uh, pedals and yeah. all the time? The uh, you know the never-ending search for uh, the great tone is uh, you know. Yeah, you have to prepare for your show, and we got more than uh, interesting stuff enough for our show to put in. So, uh, so we're gonna wrap it up, and uh, we we'll hope to see you uh, absolutely sometimes in the future at a at a at a point in the career where you want to be. I don't know.